Stealth tanks occasionally show up in science fiction, with Command & Conquer's Nod Stealth Tank and Allied Mirage Tank being notable examples. It begs the question, how practical would such a vehicle actually be? With such a large emphasis being placed on stealth in the realm of aircraft, people are obviously curious about how stealth technology could be applied to tanks, especially ever since the Polish PL-01 showed up. Some people think that a stealth tank is a bit of an oxymoron. Tanks are supposed to be these big, bulky, loud things that act as a spearhead for assaults. So not only would it be difficult to make a tank that's stealthy, but it would be kind of pointless given their role, right? I bet most of you watching already know this, but for people that don't know a lot about tanks, armored fighting vehicles are built for an incredibly wide variety of roles, not just for breaking through enemy lines. Nowadays, tanks are tasked with infantry support, exploitation, tank hunting, bunker busting, and with light tank slash infantry fighting vehicles, reconnaissance. In some of those roles, Stealth can be an extremely valuable asset to have on your side. Not only that, but not being seen as the first layer on the survivability onion. Yes, that's actually what it's called. The enemy can't shoot you if they never see you in the first place. So not only is stealth good for niche ground vehicle roles, but for ground vehicles in general. Main battle tanks that have been around for 40 years already incorporate a decent amount of stealth technology. Things like special paint and heat shields for engines have been in use for a while now. Paint capable of reducing a tank's infrared signature has been used by the US since the 60s, with Tardak researching ways to reduce a vehicle's overall signature since the 50s. The M48A2 and M60 were the first tanks to incorporate a heat shield for the engine, which helped prevent heat from transferring to the armor. So, what are the ways that a tank can be detected? How can they be counteracted? And are full-blown stealth tanks ever going to be a thing? There are a number of signatures that a tank produces which can be used to detect them, including direct visual contact, obviously, infrared or thermal, acoustic, magnetic, seismic, radar, and chemical. Visual contact speaks for itself, really. If an enemy soldier can see your tank with their naked eye, it's not being particularly stealthy at that given point. There are a few ways to reduce a tank's visibility, with the first and most obvious choice being to simply reduce the tank's profile. This is becoming easier to achieve as technology improves, bringing along more compact power plants, electronics, and allowing for turrets to be remote controlled. Perhaps equally as obvious is the choice to use camouflage, allowing for the tank to somewhat blend in with its surroundings. The effectiveness of camouflage decreases the closer you get to it, and the more the tank moves around, making its usefulness incredibly situational. Camouflage was certainly more useful in World War II and early into the Cold War, but in modern times, it's much more likely that you'll be detected by another kind of sensor. Particles like dust and smoke can also increase a vehicle's visibility, but there's not much that can be done about those. Turbine engines are virtually smokeless, but tracks will still kick up large amounts of dust. Infrared is also pretty obvious. Thermal radiation is primarily infrared in nature, so infrared cameras are able to pick up objects that are cooler or hotter than the ambient temperature. For tanks, this is a fairly large issue. Tank engines operate at high temperatures, and the friction between the tank's tracks and the ground increase their signature as well. The aforementioned paint and heat shields help alleviate this issue, but it will always be fairly easy to detect a tank thermally, thanks to the engine. If a tank were to use an electric engine, its thermal signature would be greatly reduced. Since electric motors don't produce nearly as much waste heat as combustion engines, there will still be some waste heat, and the tracks would still have a noticeable thermal signature, but from a hole down position, an electric tank would be pretty well guarded from infrared sensors. Thermal pads could also be used to reduce a vehicle's thermal signature, such as the adaptive system. These tiles can be heated or cooled to either hide the vehicle entirely, or to disguise it as something else. The adaptive demonstrator was a turretless CV-90 that only had panels on the side, it would likely be very difficult to cover the entire vehicle in these panels, and I assume that traversing the turret would also make this system ineffective. A tank's acoustic signature could also be reduced with the introduction of an electric engine, or even a sort of hybrid engine. Anyone that's been around an electric car knows that they're virtually dead silent, but they also know that the tires still make noise. So the tracks again prevent the tank from totally cancelling out its signature. There are ways to make tracks quieter, like using rubber pads instead of just straight steel, but they are still fairly loud. Reducing a tank's magnetic signature is somewhat difficult. It's possible to use a kind of composite to cover the majority of the vehicle, like on the CAV Advanced Technology Demonstrator, but it would be incredibly difficult to cover most of the metal. Granted, stealth is about reducing a vehicle's signature, not getting rid of it completely. Covering a vehicle in composite would be incredibly time-consuming and expensive, so it's unlikely that that path will be pursued, at least until technology develops to a sufficient degree. I don't think there's much that can be done to reduce a tank's seismic signature. Maybe reducing how much vibration the tank generates would help. New track designs, stronger suspensions, and structure reinforcement might do something, but I doubt it. Ground radar is a bigger threat to tanks than most people realize. Most people think that radar is only used to detect aircraft, but radar is used to detect pretty much every type of vehicle out there, including tanks. 
A tank's radar signature can be reduced in very much the same way that something like the F-22s can, through radar-absorbing materials, and the general shape of the vehicle. A decent number of prototype tanks have been made specifically with radar signatures in mind, including a modified Leopard 1, the Chieftain SID, the CAV Demonstrator, and the PL-01. Finally, there's chemical detection, which is kind of obscure. Chemical detection refers to the process of collecting and identifying particles given off by tank engines. Specifically, components like nitrogen oxides, speciated hydrocarbons, and carbon dioxide. Chemical detectors can even tell a difference between gasoline-powered vehicles and diesel vehicles, though their range is fairly small. It seems like moving to an electric engine would be the only real option for reducing a tank's chemical signature, but I don't think it's that big of a deal anyway. Something else is bound to find the tank first. As far as how all of these can be applied, I doubt that vehicles would be designed to reduce all possible signatures. I suspect that priority will be given to reducing visibility, infrared, radar, and acoustic signatures, in that if there are tanks fully geared towards being stealthy, they will be light tanks. Stealth tanks would be ideal for reconnaissance work, as recon often involves getting into fights. Despite how fast some recon vehicles are, stealth tanks could use their lower detectability to gather more intelligence, but have enough firepower to get out of the situation alive, should they be spotted. I don't think we'll see stealthy main metal tanks running around anytime soon, but I do think that they will continue to incorporate stealth technology into their design. That pretty much wraps up the video. If you thought the video was informative, leaving a like would be appreciated. If you want to leave a comment on your thoughts, that'd be appreciated too. I try to reply to as many as I can. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.